Hello everyone. This is our August 26th Liberty Day show and I want to dedicate the show to my mom, my deceased mother. You know, my mother died when I was 12 years old and uh, it was a devastating thing in my life which caused me to make a lot of wrong decisions. And uh, God knows how I loved my mom. She was a very wonderful, beautiful lady. She was a gifted piano player. She played at a lot of the churches here in Chicago. She was a lady who uh, was very warm and loving. I was kind of, My mother was the type of person that would get up in the morning and you say, what do you all want to eat? And they, all of us wanted six different things. We got it. <laughs> so she was a mother that I was never denied much in my younger days. And it made me treat my own children the same way, you know, they're very much loved. And when you treat your children like they're loved, they grow up to feel like they're somebody. And uh, it's all because of my mom. I'm like I am. Her name was Ernestine Means Stanberry. Very wonderful person. Matter of fact, she was so well liked and loved here in Chicago. Uh, she played at all the churches here probably all of them. I was a young girl going to churches and my mom would, uh, was the piano player. I'm glad she was paid too. Uh, she had three funerals when she died. One here in Chicago, a big one. One at uh, Reverend Franklin's church in Memphis, Tennessee, and also one in uh, Como, Mississippi. And Reverend Franklin is the father of Aretha Franklin. She knew the family and she knew Aretha too. <laughs> Another lady I want to acknowledge, and this is for all of the women who feel like they can't make it in society, Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt, her name was Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. And she was born October 11, 1884 in New York City. She died also November the 7th, 1962 in New York City. She was an American politician. She was a diplomat. She was an activist. She was the longest serving first lady of the United States, having held the post from March 1933 to April 1945, during her husband, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's four terms in office. And Eleanor also served as United States delegate to the United Nations General Assembly from 1945 to 1962. President Harry S. Truman, Later called her First Lady of the World in tribute to her human rights achievements. Eleanor was the niece of uh, President Theodore Roosevelt. She married her fifth cousin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in 1905. As First Lady, she was outspoken. This is really a good trait. She had regular press conferences. She wrote a daily newspaper column. <laughs> and she had a monthly magazine column, and she hosted a weekly radio show. This is all the time she was first lady. Quite different from any first lady we've ever had, even up until this day. She had her own mind. She kept her own mind. On a few occasions, she uh, publicly uh, disagreed with her husband's policies. She was a lady that lived her own life still. She was not the kind that stood back silently beside her husband. She was uh, born at 56 West 37th Street in Manhattan, New York, uh, to socialites Elliot Bullock Roosevelt and <clears throat> Anna Rebecca Hall. Eleanor Roosevelt had six children. I want to name her six children because people don't recognize that. They never talk about it. Her first child was a girl, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. She was born in 1905, and she lived up until 1997. Her second child was James Roosevelt II. He was born in 1907. He lived until 1990. And then she had Franklin Roosevelt. He was born in 1909, and he died the same year, uh, 1909. He only lived, well, he died the same year he was born. Then she had Elliot Roosevelt, born 1910 to 1990. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Jr., born 1914 to 1988. And then she had John Aspinwall Roosevelt. He was born 1915 to 1981. 
You know, this lady was such a wonderful, active lady. She had her own personality, her own life. She did not lose herself by being married. Matter of fact, she grew as a person. This is why they called her first lady of the world. She never stopped being Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. She preferred to be called Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> okay, now here's some of her achievements and what she was about as a person. From January the 20th to 1961, and from, 19, from January 20th, 1961 to November the 7th, 1962, she was the first chair of the president, Presidential Commission on the Status of Women. Another position she held, she was the first chair of the United States representative to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, 1947 to 1953. And another position, she was the first chair of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights from 1946 to 1952. Another position, First Lady of the United States from March the 4th, 1933 to April the 12th, 1945. And um, just First Lady of New York from January the 1st, 1929 to December the 1st, 1932. You know, this lady to me has always been someone I admired. People say she was not beautiful, but to me, she's a very attractive lady because she was smart, first and foremost. And her face, you know, she showed the face of integrity and truth, which makes one beautiful, really. I prefer to be like Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, and um, this is all the women who figure, well, you know, I can't do much if I have children. She is an example to women of today who feel like they have to abort their babies to be successful, you don't have to do that. Remember Eleanor Roosevelt. Remember Eleanor Roosevelt when you want to compare people to, uh, you can't compare anybody to Eleanor Roosevelt. You know, a uh, year before last, they had a group of uh, blue blood ladies were in there and they wanted to compare Hillary Clinton to Eleanor Roosevelt. Immediately, I had to stop that. I said, no, you can't compare Eleanor Roosevelt to Hillary Clinton, who had three abortions and who believe in aborting your baby to the 19th, um, the ninth month. You can't compare such a lady. This lady had six children. So you cannot come in here comparing Hillary Clinton to Eleanor Roosevelt. You cannot compare any woman who believe in abortion to Eleanor Roosevelt, because she had her children. You know, even though she didn't so much understand a lot about children, and but she had them, and uh, she was a mother, and she's an example to all American women today. I consider her still the first lady of the world because you don't have to stop doing anything because you have children. You don't have to stop uh, achieving your goals in life. Anytime somebody can have a radio station, weekly radio show, <laughs> uh, daily news columnists, monthly magazine columnists. Plus, now they don't like to say this, but she was founder of the Roosevelt University. She founded that school. And um, when they wanted to put up their statues there, I said, no, you cannot put his first because we know she founded that university. And she did. But she gave it in honor of her husband and her as first lady. But she founded that college. And that college is based on a uh, so, uh, school to increase the knowledge and awareness of human and social rights and civil rights uh, issues in the world. And people that come out of there are usually that type of a person. Look, at we had our first black mayor, Harold Washington, Roosevelt University, you know. A lot of prominent people. I consider myself uh, also someone who would like to get that uh, Elmer Roosevelt Award because I'm on human rights for the unborn, and I will stand for the rights for the unborn till I leave here, till I die, because this is what I'm called to do. And um, I'd also like to say that uh, on today, uh, in some countries, this is Repentance Day. For American society, we need to repent. We really need to repent on this day uh, because we're killing too many babies. It's gone up to 70,000, 70 million plus infants aborted uh, in America because of abortion, because of uh, the self-centeredness of uh, having abortions. 
because, you know, women have given up and they have less hope when you should have hope. Always try to know that you a child does not stop you from growing. A child uh, causes you to grow as a person. And you can have a wonderful life with children. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt is a good example for all the women of the world who figure, well, you know what? I can't have this baby because I got to do this and I got to do that. And I got to do this and I got to have my own this and I got to have my own that. No. El remember Eleanor Roosevelt, women of the world, all over the world. Remember Eleanor Roosevelt had six children. And I want to bring that out because to me, she is first lady of the world today, to this day. A lady who, uh, I went to Roosevelt University, an English major. Uh, I absolutely paid not one dime for college, not one dime. And I'm English major, minor journalism and uh, economics. I only paid for my paper and pens. I didn't pay for books. I didn't pay for courses. And I came out of the school I mean, I started out being an economics major. When they said, well, no blacks can get out of that English department, it was a challenge to me. And I did get out of that English department with a degree in uh, English, minor in journalism and uh, economics. But I'm so proud to be an alumni of Roosevelt University because I absolutely paid nothing for college. Don't you know how proud I am to know that I went to this type of a school where I paid nothing for my education? And my education has begun to mean so much to me in my later life as a producer at Can TV, also as founder of the International Pro-Life Federation. I thank God for the chapters that I have in Kenya. Festo Muasu heads one of them. Olu, uh, Olu, he is my friend, he knows me, <laughs> and Nigerian, okay? We have Richardson Palo in Kimpala, Uganda. Cavs Peterson in uh, South Africa, Johannesburg. We have Charles Quist in uh, Ghana. And uh, we have Lily D in Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong now, you can go there and have as many babies as you want. And we have uh, uh, Tyran, Iran. Uh, we have uh, a young man there, Masawi. Uh, you know, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a Sharif University student, probably out of college by now. And um, you can look at our mission statement at International Pro-Life Federation that we care to, and you will see all of the different chapters, and uh, you'll see the people who are involved in our organization. We are an organization. We do a lot of social issues in action, but the main thing is that we also make a point to let everyone know that we are against the illegal law of Roe v. Wade. And I, think, I want to God, thank God for Norma Jean McCorvey, the young lady who was used to pass that law who died. And uh, she died this year, and it was such a, I want her to at least live to see that law because you can imagine how she felt being the lady used to pass such a horrific law. And she died, and she worked all of her life trying to, to overturn that law. And one day it will be overturned. Thank you, Jesus. It will be overturned. Thank you for Oklahoma City. You can go there now. You can't have abortions there now. You know, that's one city which does not allow it. Some states are coming up to close down their Planned Parenthood, which lies to the people, which lies to people and tell them, oh, you know, uh, you, uh, they lied to me, you know. And uh, now I hear that uh, this governor, I hope he does not sign this bill where we had a group of ladies to go to, um, they went to Springfield to pass a law which says, well, even if we uh, overturn Roe v. Wade when it's overturned, we're going to still do abortion in the state of Illinois. You know, he hasn't signed that bill and hopefully he won't sign it because it's a, it's a tragedy that never should have been done and never should have even got into that issue of abortion. You know, if people want to do abortion, well, they can do that abortion. But now, especially with Obamacare, which I think is a tragedy, which should be repealed because it does not help people who are my age. I'm 73. It does not help you when you're older to keep getting your medical treatments that you need. I need another surgery on my leg. I can't get it because I have a deductible that I cannot pay. And uh, it also pays for abortion. 
which is something that should be totally repealed. It should be repealed, and I hope President uh, Trump will uh, one day be successful doing that. I've lost a lot of friends because I'm a Trump supporter, but who cares? When I think of the people who wanted to get Hillary in, if they were my friends, I didn't know that. And so now that I know that they were the people who were behind Hillary, they're not my friends. So I don't really want them back. And uh, I just hate the fact that I didn't know I had people around me who were really Hillary Clinton supporters, knowing that my son was put in DCFS by Hillary Clinton because of me calling the White House hotline. That Illinois Circuit Court case 95JA2237 said the mom was innocent. I was working on Hamilton in the same building where I ended up going two weeks later for a case with DCFS. And the, law, and the court order says the mom did nothing. But, but during that time, they were in uh, office. It was during the Clinton administration. And what happened? Oh, no. They said, well, no, no, we want her quiet. My son suffered an abusive foster home anyway for two and a half years. So I'm just going to, as uh, 50 Cent was saying in the book, uh, you uh, tried till you die, and so far as money, I will, and so far as punitive damages for my son. He had no business, my younger son, suffering because of DCFS. So I had two sons, but my oldest son lived with his father. Of course, they may not have known that, but a lot of people knew I had two children. And my little boy was the type of little boy, Kali would go to church with me. He would be at the rallies with me, Springfield, at the teachers' rallies. He would always be with his mom. We would be active at the museums. So he was a child that was very well uh, international night. I sponsored that international night and the table with BB. African food, everybody's at our table. So for me to, uh, I never gotten over the hurt of him being hurt. Even though he's gone on and living his life, I salute Kali for being the type of person he is. And you know, he says, cry me a river and build a bridge and let's get over it. But he also really wants money. He's glad his mom is trying to do that for him. And uh, I just want to thank the Lord for both of my sons, Augustine, Emua. He is now principal at Gale Academy with com also, too. I so want to thank the Lord for, uh, we want to acknowledge two other people here uh, today. Gregory Bratton of uh, Shy Grove, Chicago. Uh, this is also Gregory's Urban Farming. He is a horticultural specialist and built a lot of the hoop houses all over the city of Chicago. We can learn so much from him about growing our own food in our neighborhoods. And also, I want to acknowledge Dr. Michael James. He's a, a community activist. He's a, a, a person who uh, is also a professor, and he's an author of several well-written books, Absence and uh, Brother to Brother, Rise, a few of his books. But uh, he's a person that's always about the message continuing about the black problems that we're having uh, in society with the people insofar as uh, racism and um, the, the uh, hatred. And I want to say to people, let's start out the new year, the next year, with love. Uh, let us not hate whatever color there. You know, we all got like red blood. We're all people with our dreams and our hopes. Let us all unite here in this country to make America great again. Like Trump said, we can make it great again. And uh, I'm thankful he is president. We, I'm so thankful we don't have Hillary Clinton here as uh, president. And whoever and how many friends I've lost because I'm a Trump supporter, huh, I say bye-bye. You know, you were not my friend in the first place because most people know what happened to me and maybe some didn't. But if you support Hillary Clinton after I let everybody know what happened to me because of abortion, then I don't really want to be your friend anymore anyway. You were not my friend in the first place. <laughs> so this is the August 26th Liberty Day show. I've been kind of ill this year, but uh, hopefully we'll continue back with our shows and fashion shows. I just may have to get someone else to start up. And we've been doing the August 26th Liberty Day show since our first one, which was in 2013. And we're going to continue to have these fashion shows. I just want to thank everybody for 
listening. And uh, remember, August 26th, Liberty Day, this is the day women got their right to vote. This is the day that women and black people began to vote. And this is also uh, representative of the International Pro-Life Federation, an organization here to help overturn Roe v. Wade. This is something that women don't have a right to do, and that's to murder children. We don't have that right, and we should never have had that right. And thank God I know that. Thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful, wonderful day.